This video is a little different. Many Linux videos show you how you can install Linux on your older computer. But what I will talk about today is a completely different strategy. It's about finding used computers that are up to date and comparable to brand new computers, but can be purchased for around $500 or less. And the key to the selection is known Linux compatibility. If you're just wanting to try Linux or if you want to have more Linux computers in your household, finding an inexpensive option is great instead of having to fork out $1,500 for a new laptop. Now, the capability of the computer does vary with price and at the $500 price range, you're definitely not giving up much compared to a brand new device. At least that is what I will choose for you. If you are new to Linux compatibility and even the availability of laptops in general, you may not know which used computer to choose or even where to find them. I've got you covered on this. This is also a great option as a gift to your student kids. Easy on the budget and high in capability. Stay right there for some new information. Let me tell you what we're going to discuss. First, I will lead you to only two laptop models to get that are the best in class and still being sold brand new today. After I cover these two particular models and how to find them in the marketplace and price them based on model year, I will also discuss other used computer options near the end of the video. These two models I will focus on are heavily used in the corporate market and after a few years they are sold to wholesalers like at the end of the financing period, typically around three years. Because they are models used in the corporate market, they tend to be power packed when initially purchased. Both models are ultrabooks, meaning they're super light, very sturdy compared to some cheap models made of plastic, which is why they can usually be found in good condition. And the best news is the Linux compatibility. I have personally used both of these models, so I know they are excellent for Linux. Perhaps you already have a Linux compatible computer now, but we will concentrate on models that have proven compatibility. Then I will give you some general instructions on how to install Linux on them. The two models I will bring to your attention are the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon and the Dell XPS 13. As I mentioned, both of these are ultrabooks and have a very stiff case. Depending on the year, these are typically encased in aluminum and carbon fiber material. Both are super light, so if you're coming from just being a phone user, the lightness and portability would be important. In general, Lenovo ThinkPads have been mainstays in the corporate computer sales for a long time. The prior model that's really Linux compatible and fairly powerful even for its old age was the ThinkPad T400 series, like the T470 and T480. Several years back, that would be the model I would recommend, and you can find these models for as cheap as $150 today. I had three of these myself, and I was using them as backup computers in the past, and I purchased them for around $250 back in the day. However, these old ThinkPads are now long in the tooth, they are heavy and the screen display is not the same quality as the modern phones and computers. If you have a tight budget but still want to try Linux, you can shoot for these models. But the Lenovo X1 Carbon is a really modern machine. Very sharp and bright screens. A little over 2 pounds. Famous ThinkPad sturdy construction and generally the same as the current models except for the newer CPUs in them. And this model is easier to find, again because of the popularity in the corporate market. The Dell XPS 13 has been the most popular Ultrabook in Dell's lineup. I am currently using a Dell XPS 13 as my Linux computer and it is less than a year old. And year after year in Ultrabook comparisons, the Dell XPS 13 has been the one to beat. It typically ranks number one in lightness and in features. However, it is not as easy to find as the Lenovo X1 Carbon, perhaps because it is not sold wholesale. Now, where do you buy these two models? You can find a good supply of them on eBay and on Amazon, actually. I'll link some examples in the description. Though I worry that a video like this will drive up prices. 
hopefully the effect will be temporary. When you buy them because they are used, make sure they come with a return policy and that the seller pays shipping. It is not unusual to find that a computer is not as clean as promised or there's some defect that was missed and not described. I've bought many used devices in the past and usually I've had good experience. The key is to check the ratings of the sellers since some have very bad quality control. Some ship a computer without proper testing. However, given the sturdiness of the models I'm leading you to, chances are the computers will be fine and typically you should just see minor wear and tear. The other thing to not worry about too much is the size of the hard drive. In these models, changing the SSD drive is doing nothing more than opening up the bottom case cover and inserting a new SSD drive, which you can upgrade very, very easily. Of course, be aware of the size of the SSD drive. The typical model shipped with 256 gigabytes originally some have been upgraded to 512 gigabytes. So if the price is a little higher on some models, th this may be the reason. The memory of the computers will range from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes as a standard. Even 8 gigabytes is more than enough for Linux, so go cheaper when you can. It is also easy to replace the memory with a larger one if need be, but it will not be needed for Linux. The main issue you will have to deal with is to understand which model to get and to know how old the model is. This is extremely confusing. Dell uses specific model numbers that may not have any particular meaning like 9310 or 9350. It would not be clear what year that was made. Lenovo X1 Carbons are advertised as being 5th gen, 6th gen, all the way to 9th gen. And even this is not entirely clear. The best way to judge the computer is by checking to see the Intel CPU generation, which is really easy to determine. Intel CPUs for laptops are identified first by the speed of the CPU, typically i7, i5, or i3, and then by the actual chip model. The late 2022 Intel chips have a model that begins with 12. An example model is 12600K. This chart shows the Intel generation by year of release. I've also included the rough price range of each if you can find them. The sweet spot price-wise is the 2018 CPU model, which are CPUs with an 8000 series Intel chip. An example is 8500U. These computers are just fine performance-wise. They're going to perform near a brand new computer level for normal activities. And they will be blazing fast for Linux. Linux is not that CPU intensive to begin with compared to Windows. So this is enough and it will give you a performance akin to a new computer. Normally the models sold for corporate use will not be the i3 models. So typically you will find i7 and i5 models. The i7 is the faster CPU. Though again, for Linux use, it is not that relevant. However, expect to pay slightly more for i7 versus i5, but you can just get the i5 if the price reflects that. So again, to summarize, look for Lenovo X1 Carbon and Dell XPS 13 with an i5 8000 series chip or an i7 8000 series chip as a starting point. The pricing should be near $500 for this level. If you go a year older with an i5 7000 series chip, then expect the price to go down. For the top versions of these models, I would not go below the i5 7000 chip models. But of course, you can choose to go older or even the ThinkPad T480 series if you're on a super tight budget. Now, how do you install Linux on this computer? If you only have the new used computer as your only computer, you have to prepare your installation media ahead of time, likely using Windows since that's what these used computers come with. Have a USB stick ready. Most Linux distros will not have an installation image greater than 4 gigabytes, but given the cheap price of USB sticks, you probably can't get anything smaller than 32 gigabytes nowadays. To install Linux on a computer, there are a few steps. First, you download the Linux ISO image from the website of the Linux distro you want to use. 
the ISO image is a disk image of a bootable OS. Examples of popular and easy to use Linux distros are Linux Mint on linuxmint.org, ubuntu.com for Ubuntu, and pop OS goes to pop.system76.com. Then you need to create a bootable USB drive based on that ISO image. Typically the Linux OS will provide software to do that, or you can use Win32 Disk Imager, which is the common one used in Windows for creating bootable media. Here's a link to it, and I'll put it in the description as well. Then the last step is that your laptop needs to be able to boot from the USB stick. This is not so simple nowadays because these two models have security features to prevent loading a new OS from a USB stick. The way you do that is you have to go to BIOS on that computer. On a Dell XPS to go to BIOS, just keep tapping on F2 during startup and it should enter BIOS mode. On a Lenovo X1 Carbon, tap and hold F1 or F2. Once you are in BIOS, you have to change the boot sequence so it boots from the USB first. You also have to turn off the feature called Secure Boot, which will prevent the USB stick from being read. Once you boot from the USB stick, the Linux distro will start up typically in trial mode, and then you will get the option to install it permanently. If you just replace the SSD drive and it's currently blank, this same procedure will allow you to install a brand new installation of Linux again by booting from the USB stick. Now what about other computer models? Which models will run Linux? In general, most standard computers will run Linux fine and there will typically be some glitches in some areas where Linux doesn't have the correct driver. Typical issues are touch screen driver problems, power saving problems, NVIDIA cards, sound driver problems, and specialized drivers like unusual screen sizes. Also non-standard devices may not work. So the more plain vanilla the hardware, the better the chances it will work. Linux itself will more than likely start up in some mode, though the compatibility issues will show up as not being able to use all the features of the device as originally intended. Because most Linux distros have a trial mode, you can actually test it out and see if it's compatible with the machine. Just as an FYI, I would test Linux compatibility with Ubuntu since it is the distro that often supplies the most drivers. So a computer may not work with another distro, but could work with Ubuntu. Pop OS, by the way, is based off Ubuntu. Ubuntu publishes a certified list of laptops, which it has verified as being completely compatible with the latest three versions of Ubuntu, meaning the last three years. And the list includes computers from Dell, HP, and Lenovo. You will also find that an Intel-based MacBook Pro will be quite Linux compatible, though I hear there could be driver issues with power saving and sound drivers. MacBooks are very easy to find used as well, and the reason I did not recommend them here is because they are not 100% compatible with these minor driver issues. But if you have a spare Intel MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, then by all means give it a try. Pricing-wise, a 2017 MacBook Pro will be priced at around $500. My company sells various tools to protect your privacy. We have the Brax2 Privacy Phone, a de-Google phone that hides your identity. We have Byte's VPN to hide your IP address from third parties. The service also automatically obfuscates your DNS queries by the automatic use of Pi-hole, and it also comes with a Tor routing option. We also have the Braxmail product, which gives you five domains that can allow you to manage your mail for better privacy. And this service removes your metadata from the header. If you're interested in these products, they are on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.